Good morning. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. I have my nephew who's going to start off reading today. If you're wondering how we're related, it's through buffness in Christ. And what we're looking at today is how Jesus won the victory over Satan's temptation. And what does that even mean for us? So this first reading comes from Romans, Romans, and this is going to serve as our chapel focus today. Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. What then will we say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Who will bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, who died and more than that was raised to life, is the one who is at God's right hand and who is also interceding for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Will trouble or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors for him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, nor powerful forces, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Brother Sean. Now, what I want us to just think about is, how does Satan and temptation work? Sometimes I think we feel like, um, you ever have somebody that you're having a conversation with, and they just lie. They just lie for no reason. And you're like, I didn't even ask you that, and you're volunteering a lie. That's, that's not how Satan works. Satan is not the type of person who's going to trap you by saying, hey, hey, baby, hey, baby, how you doing? You know I just bought a plane. You should come over to my house. And you know why? Because I got this limousine, and we're going to a private jet, and then we'll go to the Caribbean on this island. Like, no, he doesn't lie like that. Satan is very clever with his lies. He's sneaky. Satan is the type that more so does something like you see something on social media, and you look at it, and you're like, that's talking about me. Satan is the one who will say, that person is definitely talking about you. How can they talk, though? They have a face that only a mother can love. That's true. That person is saying something that is a lie about you. That's true. That person is trying to defame your name. That's true. Then he starts with a lie. You know the best way to get back at this person is to post something on social media about them. That's what Satan does. Satan is the king of making you second guess yourself. And Satan is always that jealous associate. Jesus is our best friend. God is our best friend. And he's that one who's always saying, hey, he really doesn't love you. Hey, if he loved you, he would have did it this way or that way. That's Satan's role. Satan is clever at what he does. Now, I want you to think about this, and I want you to do this. I'm not trying to put anybody on the spot. If you don't believe this, we'll, we'll work on you. But stand up if you call yourself a follower of Christ. If you're in the cafeteria, if you're in the auditorium, if you're in your classroom, if you call yourself a follower of Christ, stand up. Now, what Satan wants us to think sometimes is he wants us to think that there's a gun to our head. And if we sit down, it's okay. Because he wants to make everything a life and death situation. He wants you to think at this moment that if you sit down, you'll get away with it. God won't care. And he wants you to think if you do stand up, there's going to be a bullet put in your head. And we know in most cases that's not true. And that's the beauty of being in America. We don't have to worry about our, our religious freedom in that part. Go ahead and take a seat. Now, what is Paul addressing in what Sean just read? Paul is addressing this. He's addressing who is really for us. He's addressing what separates us from Yah. Yah is God. He's also making us think about Christians have the best counsel possible for the judge that we're going against. And he wants us to think, out, think about despite the lies, God's love is inseparable. Now, I want you to think about this. Who is really for you? Immediately, you're probably thinking, man, my family is for me. Some of my best friends are for me. But what you have to think about, and what we, we sometimes do is, if you don't know who you really are or what you identify with sometimes throws you off. I am a short, bald, 
black man who's an independent. Uh-oh, that means white people are against me. That means tall people are against me. That means people with hair are against me. That means Democrats and Republicans are against me. And when you have that mentality and you start forgetting who your identity really is, all of a sudden you can feel like a whole entire army is against you. And when we look at this, Paul is addressing some good news. He says, what should we say about these things? And what are those things he's talking about? He's talking about the fact that the spirit of life is for all of us. He's talking about the fact that even though we might have present sufferings, we will have future glory. Now, why believe that God is really for us? Now, I know there are some people who like, man, Mr. Whiteside does not like me. He just gave me a detention. But I can guarantee if I came up to you and said, hey, here go the keys to my car, my house. You can have all the money in my bank account. You will have no choice but to be like, he's got my back. And in the same way, God did the same thing for us. He gave us his most prized possession, which is his son. And sometimes we get confused, though, with this statement. How will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? Those all things is the trick, though. And that's where Satan comes into play. He wants us to think about the stuff that feeds our flesh or the stuff that we think we need or the stuff that the world tells us we need. But I want you to think about it like this. Do you need money? Yes or no? Yes, you need money. But at the same time, if you didn't have air, which one would be more important? If you didn't have a car, which one would be more important? So you think about that. Air is like the love of God. When we don't have that, we can't deal without a, a minute with it. Some of you probably can hold your breath for a minute, maybe even two minutes. But if you didn't have air, would you really care about money, cars, clothes, a phone? Absolutely not. In the same way, water, water being the word of God. You might be able to go a couple of days without that, but you could not go weeks or months without water. And that's what Satan is always trying to get us to think about. He wants us to get that other stuff when it really isn't that important. Now, what separates us from God? Now, you see right away in this passage, it talks about persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, sword, trouble, distress. Those are all things that Satan says, if God allows this to happen in your life, he really doesn't love you. But like we've heard earlier in this week, those things build character. Those things build hope. And when we think about this, tests don't equal separation. No faith equals separation. Sin puts a wedge in our relationship with God. Now I want you to think about this. Who are you letting speak on your behalf? This is something else that Paul addressed. Now I thought about two TV shows. Don't watch these shows, though. In fact, I'm going to give you the whole thing so you don't have to feel obligated to watch it. The first one being power. Do you want John Proctor to represent you? And the reason I thought about this show is because all of us in some form or fashion are leaving, leading double lives. And we want a lawyer, or we want someone or a religion that sometimes makes us look good. And in the show Power, this man is a drug kingpin. Now some of you are like, I'm not a drug kingpin. He commits adultery. But at the same time, he's also a politician. And the reason he picked this lawyer just like the reason sometimes we want to pick certain religions or exclude certain things in the Bible is because it makes us look good or it makes us feel good. But should he really let this man represent him? And at the end of the show, what happens is he ends up dying. He ends up losing his family. He ends up dying. And this lawyer, who I would say would be Satan, ends up dying as well. The second show, Aaron Wallace. Now, this is especially for those who don't know Jesus or who still are like, ah, I don't know about that. He was put in prison for no reason in his eyes. And some of us are in a spiritual prison. Some of us are saying to myself, I have to get myself out of this situation. So who does he have represent him out of this? Represent him and get him out of prison? He had to self-represent him. But what he finds is though, even though he gets released, he's still not free. There's still something missing. And I know sometimes when you don't have Jesus in your life, you are searching. And even though you might have success, you might have everything that you feel like you need, you still know there's something missing. So who should we really have speak on our behalf? And that's Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the greatest lawyer, the greatest counsel ever. He's the one who says, I know you committed this sin. I know you deserve this time. But you know what? I'm going to take the time for you. That's the greatest lawyer we possibly can have. He's the go-between between the Father. He's the go-between between our judge. Now, you can't shake this love. This made me think about Savion. And Savion is a student who goes here. And sometimes we say to ourselves, in this world, I just can't see the love. But God's love is everywhere. And it's just made me think about sometimes at lunch when I'm trying to watch film, get ready for the game, or sometimes I'm trying to talk to a coworker, I have Savion who's me. 
me. I'm sitting down typing, poke, poke, poke. And that's the same thing with God's love. You can't shake God's love. Sometimes I don't have my focus on Savion. Sometimes I'm trying to ignore him, but that doesn't change the fact that it's there. And what we have to understand is Satan is always trying to tell us that he doesn't love you or you really don't need this love, but you can't shake the love. Just because you can't feel the love doesn't mean the love is there or you become so good at ignoring it doesn't mean that it's not really there. And what we have to realize is what's done is done. It's paid for. Anything we do in this life, it's like Corey takes this girl on a date. All of a sudden, Pastor Hebner sees him there. He pays the debt. He pays the bill. What's done is done. Jesus has paid for us already. Now, Corey, on the other hand, might say, you know what? I really want to leave a great tip. That's okay. But we really got to realize this. What's done is done and what's paid for when we are followers of Christ. Now, what does this love empower us to do? This love empowers all of us to be conquerors. So despite all the different things that we have in our life, we can be a conqueror because he loved us. Now, all blessings come because of what, though? Why do these blessings come? These blessings come because Jesus Christ separated himself on the cross so that we will never, ever be separated from on the cross so that we will never, ever be separated from the Father. So because he chose to die on the cross, because, because he chose to descend to hell, because he rose from the dead, none of us will ever, ever be separated from Christ. We're going to continue with the hymn. and praise you for Jesus' victory over temptation that allows us to be conquerors. Conquerors over our fears, traumas, past transgressions, and future obstacles. The sting of death and the lies of Satan don't have to be our stories. Thank you, God. We praise you for being our go-between and giving us the victory over Satan. Amen. You are dismissed.